Hey, folks. I mean, what can we say about Nick that we haven't already kind of beaten into the ground at this point? Uh, well, you know, I was excited to see Maya. Maya you did so well. That was incredible, Maya. Thank yep. you uh, for, for talking to the people about game day. That's usually my role, but yeah. I think Maya did it much better than I I've ever she done. did, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Nick was there. Yeah, yeah, we got to uh, deal with Nick. Somebody's got to anyway. But welcome back to our live coverage here at reInvent. This is AWS On Air. I am A.M. Grabellium, a developer advocate here. We're going to be talking uh, one of my my favorite areas, actually, .NET, Adrian. Uh, but you want to tell the people about yourself first? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Hi, <laughs> my name is Adrian Sabiguel. I'm a principal partner, enterprise architect here at AWS. And the bulk of my career, which is an interesting, un totally unplanned situation, is my job was to get rid of the .NET, <laughs> the data center and customer accounts. That's rude. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm a Linux guy at heart. They had, had me wearing two hats, but yes, you know, I had to understand the thing better to better be able to support it. Well, hey, do we have some news for you, actually? You can run .NET on Linux. That's what we're going to be great. talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, everyone. My name is Nitz Jagannathan, and I'm a product manager in the EC2 Windows and Modernization uh, team. And uh, today I'm here to talk about the Qt developer and how it's going to help customers port their legacy .NET applications into cross-platform .NET, which basically means instead of running on Windows instances, now you can run on Linux. Uh, music to my ears. I know. You can have the best of both worlds. Now you can you can write code, mm -hmm. C sharp, Adrian, as I know you have been Want desiring <laughs> your entire life. Uh, you know, one of my favorite languages, if not my favorite language, and you can run it on your favorite operating system. I mean, whatever distro you choose. Uh, can you choose a distro of Linux? Absolutely. Yeah, you have a favorite? One hundred percent. What is it? It's Arc. Okay. Okay. All right. Kidding. All right. It's absolutely not. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an Ubuntu, uh, I'm an Ubuntu Debian, Debian nerd to the core. Sorry. All right. All right. All right. Good. Cool. All right so let's talk about Q. And, and look, this is I've, I've talked to a lot of .NET uh, devs over the years. You know, framework is something I think. Uh, you know, migrating off of .NET framework started quite a few years ago, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's still happening. It's still happening. We've been talking to a lot of customers. And so this is an existing pain problem for a lot of enterprises who have legacy applications. There are hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of them. And it was written a long time ago. And like Microsoft has stopped supporting those old framework applications. So yeah. there are security issues, compliance issues. But the problem is, it is taking so long um, to actually port these applications, yes. because, right? Like, and that's why it's still happening, right? They don't have the. I mean, the team that wrote these code are long gone. They don't <laughs> have the expertise, and it, they need an easy mechanism to port these applications from .NET framework into the cross-platform, right? Yes. And the main the main benefits are security, compliance, performance issue. You know, like. .NET 8 is up at least 2x more performant than what the framework was. Right. So, right. And, and, and look, like just to give people who are unfamiliar with the .NET world, you know, I don't have exact year. I remember when I started here, it, it used to be called .NET Core, Core. That's when right. it first yes. launched this multi-operating system support, That's right? right? Um, and that was like 2014, 2015 time frame, That's right? right. Yeah. Um, and now we are at .NET 9. Right. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's continuously improving and continuously they're adding more capabilities. So, But that's almost 10 years now, too, that people are still porting yeah. off of <laughs> .NET Framework. That's right. And, and I think it, it speaks to what you're going to talk to us about. It is not the easiest thing to do because there's an existing code base. Yes. Maybe the people are gone. You know, nobody knows what this part of the code branch does, or or, 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 or this class. Yeah. Uh, like, what is that for? I don't know. Or, uh, or maybe we get joined out of I don't know where by the Canadian Hero team. So hey, folks, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for joining us. We're in, uh, thanks for joining and tuning in, folks. We're here at the desktop.net modernization. Something I have admittedly very little understanding of, but I love to turn it off. There we go. So <laughs> let's see. Let's pull. You've got a slide to yep. help us understand how how you can use Amazon Q to help with this transformation. Absolutely. Like so, what we have done is like essentially to in order to make developers and enterprises life easy. What we have is a Q develop Amazon Q developer for .NET okay. to add transformation. Right. So what we do is we take customer source code block and we analyze it for incompatibilities, mm -hmm. identify what, all the things that are actually like wrong with the um, .NET framework ones that we need to move into the .NET core. And we start, uh, you know, essentially like we apply all of our learnings that we have gained over the years mm -hmm. and use those cur curated knowledge base to guide this transformation process. And then we apply those modifications and we verify that it has been working and we yeah. build it and we give them back to the developer and they can verify that 
before they actually integrate it. So it's all of this is automated and it helps developers rather than focusing on actually like doing all these integral, you know, initial details, the grunt work, yeah. they offload it to Amazon Q and we take care of all of that. Right, and you then it's an assist, right? Yes. It's it's still reviewed by, by the development team. And just to give people an idea too of like why this needs to happen, uh, who, who are unfamiliar with .NET, maybe maybe like Adrian over here. Hey, hey, you hey. Know. I didn't say I was unfamiliar, I said I didn't like <laughs> it. I, well, that's true, that's but, true. But, and clearly if you don't like it, then you're unfamiliar because no, no, it's, you're, it's you're, glorious. So, but, hold on, hold on. Framework, uh, it, it has libraries that are not supported in, in the new version, yep. right? So you, you can't just like start you, running a framework app. Exactly, and it's something I actually ran into where it started my uh, trepidation with having mm. to run and manage. Uh, many years ago when I worked at a startup, uh, there was an M&A of an older, I believe it was a .NET 2 application. Oh, it just, that it's, is pretty old. <laughs> that is pretty old. <laughs> and, and here's the thing, millions of customers were using it at the point. Yeah. It's a fragile artifact because yeah. nobody knew the libraries, how everything worked, um, which the correct versions, et cetera, et cetera. So we moved it over, and I know my wife's watching. She's, she's going to remember this <laughs> and trolled me in the chat. Uh, did a big migration, everything was working, and then, of course, something happened later in the day while I was done, and they were trying to call me desperately, knock on my door, trying to figure out what is going on, Yeah. and then they eventually were able to locate a next dev to go in and go fix it, but extricating all of that consternation is what you're doing. Yep. All right, so let me, let me, let me say this. Uh, we are a very interactive channel here. We like yeah. to see this working. Awesome. Nits, can we, uh, can we actually so explore this with Amazon Q. Are you going to show us something, a demo perhaps? It's always great if you can show an actual demo of all what's happening and yeah. the you know, magic behind it. Yeah, let's so, see it. Oh, There we go. So all one right. of the things that we, you know, as we talked about, we talk to customers, they say like, we have hundreds of applications. How are you mm -hmm. going to port it? And we don't want to, you know, like assign dedicated developer time. So what we are going to do is we are going to start a demo here where we will start the experience of porting from a customer source code repo and do the autonomous transformation of all of it in parallel, and we will submit it to a new branch in GitHub. So you'll see a demo of all the way from job creation till like we can see the code that has been modified in GitHub repo. Oh, that's so nice. let's so go you through. You can use this with your .NET yes. app. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. All right. So when you when you first like you know ask Amazon Q to create a chat for you, it gives you a list of use cases that we support. Right? Mm -hmm. like we support .NET modernization, but we also support VMware and mainframe as well. Mm -hmm. But for the scope of this particular audience, I'm going to keep it only talking about like .NET. Mm -hmm. So here we are saying like what kind of transformation you want to do. We say like you know it is going to be .NET modernization. Mm -hmm. So then once what we are doing is instead of uh, you know we are reducing the back. We are reducing the overload on customers. So okay. all we are saying is that, like, okay, we know what your objective is. Here is a you know like a project that we have created for you. Why don't we just get started, and then you have the option to customize everything the way you like it. Right, so oh, there we go. Okay, glad you're happy with the job details. Right. So once you create a job, what you get is like a high-level plan of this is what you know like Amazon Q developer is going to do. Oh, before it even uh, before it even alters any code any you know so first thing is like we are basically creating a plan and we are giving mm -hmm. a plan to the you know like the customers whether it's a devops personnel who's dealing with this or an it admin mm -hmm. who's responsible for tasking like large you know like migration projects yes they come here they just create a you know this view this is the plan they will have the option of actually providing information in uh, in terms of like you know what details they have to provide okay so the first thing they have to do is they will have to connect their source code repository with Amazon Q. Okay. And, and this is a big step for large, large enterprises because like, you know, they have their own security control, so you need to make sure the admin reviews it. So the process that we go through is like, you know, essentially you provide your AWS account, yes. and we are leveraging the existing AWS uh, code connection service to connect between your GitHub as well as your, um, you know, like Amazon Q. Mm -hmm. And some and an admin has to review it, and they have to approve this connection because you don't want Amazon Q to be connected to a repo that you know is not approved by your admins and things like that. So this is what we talk about a human supervision. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Even if you have an existing team member in your right. team, 
this is exactly what you'll do, right? Like when somebody yeah. is when a junior yeah. developer if does something. Yeah, if you were to do this yourself, right, without exactly. any any AI assistance at all, yep. you would have exactly the same setup that you're talking about. Yep. Exactly. You would maybe have like it broken down into uh, a sauna task. You know, you yeah. you burn down the stories, mm -hmm. uh, but you've got a plan. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's, so that's exactly what we are doing. Is that like here there's a two person administrator like who has to review it, mm -hmm. and like once they review it and they have approved it. You can say like, okay, use this connector and you send to queue. Okay. okay. So when you send to queue, only at this point, Amazon queue and goes and like does the evaluation of the repository. For this particular release, we are supporting the GitHub. Uh, so we only have GitHub connection. Okay. So from between Amazon queue will go to your GitHub account, mm -hmm. do the evaluation, scan all your uh, repositories and identify repos that have project types that we support. Then we, we definitely like, you know, have um, some projects that we don't support on front end side. And if there is a repository, we'll say like these are repos we don't support. Okay. Mm. So the so the manual intervention is reduced to a point where like okay we have gone in, we have scanned your repos and we have come and say like okay there is this repository it does not have any project types. Oh. So we will not transform it for you. The ones that we have here are the list of options. Do you want to do it? Like what do you want to select? Right. So you have the option of saying okay I will, I want to select only this Bob's bookstore. Uh, uh, this is the classic .NET uh, example, example you always use. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're on the, the .NET team. Yeah. I've seen Bob's bookstore before. So, the, so you have also have the option of let's say you have a very large uh, GitHub account with thousands of repositories. Like you know, you also have the option to download it uh, okay. as a JSON file, modify it the way you want it, and then you can upload it back. So after selecting mm -hmm. what you like, you can say like, okay, send to queue. This is the okay. point. Like again, I'm I'm actually operating as an admin role here. So that like you know you will actually not see an approval, but if it's a contributor like a junior developer who's doing this, yes, it goes to the admin again, and they have to verify that like okay, the the information that you're giving to Amazon Q is this the right one, right? So, so having those checks and balances and guardrails ensures that the right behavior is followed, and Amazon Q uh, the transformation is also like guided by what the enterprise needs up. Right. I think that's really important to highlight, right? This is a, a an assistant. Assistant. Right? Yeah, it exactly. is not uh, taking the place of. It is completely going in and, and giving you the plan, giving the resources, and then you review this. It's expediting what you would do that's, as the developer. You nailed it right there. Like yeah. Because there is another point which I want to point out is that the work log is... Um, you know, an audit log of all the actions Amazon Q did over this process. Like, if you see here, it says, like, hey, this user provided this input with, at this particular time, allowing it to, like, you know, allowing Q to take action. Mm -hmm. And we have selected these repositories, and this is all I'm going to take. Right. At this point, you know, like, you can continue tracking the work logs as you would do with the cloud trail. You will see, like, all the actions that Amazon Q does. So you can monitor this all the time with mm -hmm. every action that is happening, right? And there is, let's, you know, you don't expect a DevOps person or somebody to constantly like be in front of this console. They come back, if they want to get a high level view of what's happening, they will come here and they will look at the dashboard. Okay. If they want like more detailed view, they can have always like go, you know, work project by project, look at the uh, work logs and stuff like that. So that's, you know, that is a high level transformation of how it's happening. Yes. I'm just showing you, you know, it. a demo is never complete without showing code. So yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oh. take you all the way through like, you know, GitHub and what happens in there. Are we going to look at some of the suggestions maybe uh, that, that Q, are we just looking at, at Bob's books so prior is, to the transformation? So you will see both. Okay. You'll see okay. the code that was replaced by uh, Amazon Q developer and it is, com it is committed to a new branch. So it is not exactly, um, you know, impacting the customer's existing work. Right. It's not there until it's not you there. add yeah. it in. Exactly. Uh, uh, right. It's not, it's not maybe like... My, like I might do, it's not committing to main. Uh, <laughs> that, that's fair. I mean, if you have a teammate in your in your you know like development team, if somebody is committing the code, you don't I, without verification, you don't merge something in. That's exactly the same. Hey, approach, clearly right? you don't work on my team. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, they they haven't taken away my commit direct to main access yet. I'm okay. just kidding. I they would have, to, I would they, have, have, they won't let me do it. Uh, I tried. Okay. But. So if you are interested in like identifying what exactly Q did, mm -hmm. like you can look at you know more details, specific how many projects were there within mm -hmm. that particular repo, and what was the original framework, how many lines of code were transformed, how many files that were changed. You can get all of that information, right? So now, before I go, so here's what it is. This target branch destination. This okay. is the branch where Amazon Q will be like committing the code. So let's go into GitHub 
and we can check this out. So if you go into Bob's bookstore, uh, you know, into the repo, and this is the branch, D05, and you can see what commit happened in here. You will see like Amazon Q transform had committed. Okay. And, and five files have been changed and 80, 83 additions and deletions. And you can see the older version had .NET 6 and the newer changes are .NET 8. So you can see wow. the diff of all the changes that happened. And this is also in a new branch. And guess so what? You, it's code yeah. review time. Code right? Exactly. Like, exactly. This, exactly is, what this is when I would I would be uh, pinged on Slack and saying, hey, uh, there's, there's a new CR. Can you go review, please? And I'd say... I'm live streaming. Uh, I'll get to it. And they'll say, no, you need to do it now. Stop live streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, moving so on. A, so the way it goes is, you know, you have a full option of reviewing all the changes that happen, like the files that were deleted, the files that are added to support uh, from framework to .NET 8, right? And this is exactly like, the existing process that every enterprise is following today. Right. And we are integrating Seamless with the, you know, with their current process with the human supervision every step of the way. I really like the way that you are enunciating this. This is a tool, a tool in the toolkit to help be a force multiplier effectively. In exactly. that, that example that I was using, uh, it was effectively having to combine 16, 17 different people to do just about everything that you've run through for one specific example with one errant line of code effectively what it was. When That's you right. think the amount of time, churn, consternation that causes versus the very controlled being able to regiment and go through the change log, this makes it so much easier for the average developer. So think about, I think the main factor that I want to hear, you know, like leave the audience with is okay. the scale. If you have hundreds of applications, mm -hmm. imagine doing this manually versus like you yeah. you offload it to Amazon Q to, to actually take care of most of mm -hmm. the work. Right. Yeah. And then you leverage the benefits out of it uh, and bring in the development team only when it's needed. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So they, they, they can focus on, you look, the, the, the code that I hate writing personally is boilerplate code, right? right. Uh, mm -hmm. And so anything that can help speed that across or transformational code for a migration. These are not like building out new features. These are not building out things that are impactful to like the business objectives, business, exactly. right? These are things that we have to do, right, right. to maintain a working application. And uh, yeah, getting rid of that, that's great, right? Or expediting it, making it faster, yeah. that's great. Like, so I love this. I love this so much. How do I go and get started? So Amazon Q Developer, uh, you know, we launched it in preview um, at reInvent. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Amazon Q Developer uh, slash transform, and okay. you should be able to get started with the both. Uh, this is available the, the in .NET support. .NET yes. support. Okay. okay. So you can. It's available as a Visual Studio extension or for large scale porting in the web ex experience. All both right. are available to customers. All right, everybody. There you have it. Go try it out. Uh, but for now, we got to go, and we'll be back with more. So stick around.